Hey YouTube, I'm gonna go run an errand. And actually, uh, somebody who lives here in Jacksonville uh, had a request for a specific route uh, area I'm gonna drive to. So we're gonna get going here. Um, interesting, my wide display is not working. Starting off with our unprotected left here. Sorry, that was the music that was keeping it from going wide. A little bit of creep, needs to creep. There's a car coming, needs to stop. Okay, it did. There's a nice gap coming on the left, but it's busy on the right. So let's see what it does here. This is normally where it... Okay, I'm in the middle of the road here and I've got to take over. It was waiting on the traffic from the right um, while stopping in the middle of the left. So. That kind of confirms that it needs both the left and the right to be clear right now on this type of intersection. Um, but that's still, that's a good test. I mean, I'm, I'm glad that that happened in that scenario because I was not really sure in 10.1 if it had any median functions. And I think that clarified for sure that it does not. Okay, I'm proceeding manually, then I'll re-engage. I manually changed the lane there to get out of the uh, passing lane with all this traffic that's coming from behind. Yeah, so uh, I've been in New York this week, so I haven't made any videos since last Sunday, but just a little bit of discussion on um, perhaps 10.1 and where we are with regards to uh, this public release. It feels like Elon kind of clarified we're not getting a build this Friday, but we can expect 10.2 next Friday. Obviously those timelines can change and you know when we're predicting a week out sometimes there is some variability in there. But with the safety scores, uh, you know, I don't have safety score on this car right now because I'm not on a dot .32 build, but um, there's a lot of conversation about how the safety algorithm, you know, isn't 100% perfect. And a lot of the, the, the hits on the app are coming from even forward collision warnings or braking warnings or things like that, even while FSD is engaged. Um, while I know everybody wants to get 100 because Elon clarified that they're going to start at the 100s, uh, and, and maybe manually driving is the best way to do that. I, I'm not sure because I haven't been able to use the app. But I guess I would just say, you know, just focus on driving safely and, and you know, take, take it as it comes. Um, this 10.1 build, uh, it's not great. I mean, it's good. It's no real different than the rest of them before this, but, uh, you know, it's not really a step change over anything we had in the nines, really. So I, I feel like we're on 9.4, really. Which is okay, you know that's the that's the progress here. But the big change is we're getting ready to add a lot of testers to the program, uh, which I am in support of uh, if it's measured and 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 methodical. But I I don't want anyone that is hoping to get FSD beta or does that get FSD beta to misinterpret any videos that you're watching to think this is is ready for wide release, meaning like everybody can use it. If you're joining this program, you're a tester. <laughs> you're adding data to the network. You need to be prepared for this car to do something you're not expecting it to do. Many times, like, you know, in these straight roads like we are in right now with a little bit of traffic, it's very reliable. Um, but that's kind of the same that it's been with auto steer and some of the other functionality like that. That's kind of what we're doing right now is basically auto steer. You know, when the planner gets involved and, and some of the other beta testers have, have some GPS issues, you know, with their area or maybe their car, I don't know. But if this planner over to the right of my screen gets confused, anything can happen. The car, and, and you might not have it in your mind because you might not be focusing on your screen to realize you have a GPS issue. But a, a sudden GPS issue could create lane changes that you weren't expecting. Um, 
So anyway, I'm just trying to talk with the tone to, you know, to use safety as your guide, you know, expect the unexpected and just be prepared. Uh, and, and I've debated this with a few people um, on Twitter uh, that say, you know, you're not a user if you're getting FSD beta because Elon hadn't used the word tester. Make no mistake, if we get a build that is anything like 10.1 or 10.0 or 10.0.1 and, and we're adding people to it, you are a tester, even if Tesla is not calling it a testing program because the software is still being built. It's still being changed every single week. Uh, and, and where we are right now is not where we're going, to, we need to end up. So there's gonna be changes along the way. And every time Tesla has made a change, there's been improvements, but then there's been regressions. So if you get added to the FSD program, you just gotta expect those regressions. Okay, I'm gonna get off the soapbox. I, you know, I don't wanna completely be, you know, negative attitude about, you know, adding people because I'm not about adding people. I just want people that get added to be prepared, uh, especially on your first few drives as you get your, uh, you know, I get old Navy term, get your sea legs underneath you, you know, to know what you're driving with. Um, just take it with the, the seriousness that it is. This program's important. We have a lot of work to do and we need more people, honestly, to gather data in other parts of the country and world, hopefully soon, Canada, and hopefully we can add Europe at some point. That's all important data. I think one thing we have definitely learned uh, from some of the testers in California versus some of us in different parts of the country, including Florida, Chicago, the Northeast, uh, you know, the, the Atlantic coast, Georgia, uh, the cars behave differently on what would seemingly be similar roads. I don't know why. I can't really pin my head on why, you know, California roads could be overfit. Not only did Elon say it, but I think a few of the testers have really kind of verified it. So, I don't know, maybe there's some location settings in there too that we don't know about. All right, let's continue the drive. If you guys got any questions about what I said or thoughts, just leave them in the comments and we can continue to chit chat about it. I am probably gonna disengage and force the route to go not on that interstate as it's planned on the screen right now. I probably will force it onto a, a little bit more of a rural road to keep FSD engaged. That's the only change to the route I'm doing right now. Okay, this is where I'm disengaging to reroute it manually so we don't join the interstate ahead. All right, there's a reroute, reengaging. For those of you that watch all of my videos, this, this is a route that I've never driven before on film. I, I don't see it as being overly complex really, so I don't have any features that I'm chasing um, other than at the end of this route, uh, normally a, a multi-lane, very heavy traffic scenario. That's kind of why I'm going this way. We have some railroad tracks here map them but it needs to slow down it can't hit railroad tracks at 35 miles an hour I'm gonna mark that wanted to jump out of this lane. I'm not sure why.
Interesting, got a skateboarder here on a two-lane road. Okay, after this intersection is kind of this section of road um, that I basically wanted to show you with some pretty heavy traffic. It's multi-lane, multi-traffic signal going underneath an overpass with a um, underneath the highway. And you can see we're going over into this uh, right area, which is kind of a little shopping center area. So it should provide some interesting traffic scenarios. I think that what most people are reporting right now on 10.1 is that the car is impatient on waiting in its proper lane and making pretty bad lane uh, decision choices at times. Not sure what to attribute that to. It's just the current behavior it's doing. So there's kind of a fine line in between letting it change lanes and just consistently staying no in the lane you need to be in. Interesting on this car in the front left of this lane uh, that I'm looking at, it's kind of going in and out, but it's almost like fading in and out. Uh, interestingly, that well, it's not doing it at the moment, but if you go back a few seconds, there it goes. It was just kind of fading in and out. The, the tail light stayed on, but the car disappeared. Interesting. There's a whole lot going over to the right with some. Uh, location of that car in that second lane over to the left. I'm not exactly sure how to quantify what it's looking at and how. Okay, we've got a protected green arrow here. Nice job on that one. No issues. Lane change into the middle lane. Okay, it wants to get over. It fit in a pretty tight spot there. Interesting, that was good. And now it's getting in a turn lane that I don't, well, let's see. I think this one can work. I'm gonna let the planner figure it out. I would not have gotten in this lane personally, but I think it actually can work. All right, it's working its way over. It did a good job. Okay, it wants to go over. It needs to get over. All right, I'm pressing the accelerator with its indecision in the middle of a lane with traffic behind me. So it, it, it got itself in a situation there where it didn't do the lane change appropriately. Um, okay, I'll take this lane in here. All right, well, that's leg one. I will uh, fire you guys up on leg two uh, with the return and see how it goes.